by study cause and effect and try to formalize the principles by which we draw conclusions about causation and how we distinguish it from mere association. There are numerous examples that make clear that causation and association are not the same thing. Uh, for instance, there is strong association between ice cream consumption and murder rates. Now, it's probably not the case that ice cream consumption causes murder, uh, but rather both increase during the summer months, during warm weather. So how do we distinguish between association and causation? Well, to make a very complicated story rather short, when we can be randomized, and otherwise, uh, we try to control for common causes or confounding factors of the supposed cause and supposed effect. Um, and when possible, we also try to collect multiple measurements of each over time to try to work out the temporal ordering of the changes. This evening, I would like to discuss some research on what happens when we try to apply this sort of reasoning to the relationship between religion and health. There's now a fairly substantial body of research suggesting that those who attend religious services live longer. All, of course, do eventually die in the end. But if you fix a follow-up period, if you look at the likelihood of dying in the next 10 years, say, those who attend services once per week um, are about 20 to 30 percent less likely to die in the next 10 years than those who do not attend at all. And the effect seems even larger for those who attend even more frequently. Those who attend more than once per week are on average about 30 to 40 percent less likely to die during follow-up than those who do not. Uh, these associations persist when we try to control for um, common causes or demographic factors like income or age or gender or race. They persist, um, though somewhat attenuated, when control is made for various health behaviors. Some of the initial studies on this topic were methodologically fairly weak, but increasingly the methodology and the study designs have become better and better. Recently, in work I've been doing with other researchers at the School of Public Health, we used repeated measurements of both attendance and health over time with some of the best data and some of the best causal inference methods available. We were interested in whether the relationships still persist. This was the strongest study methodologically to date on this topic. And indeed, the relationships did hold up. If anything, the strength of the evidence for a causal relationship was even greater. The relationships have now been replicated in a sufficient number of studies and in a diverse range of populations, but they are in fact generally accepted within the research community. There's interest now as to why this relationship is present. Uh, is it social connection and social support? Uh, or does it have to do with lifestyle and behavior, lower smoking rates, for instance? Or does service attendance encourage prayer and meditation, which itself might affect health? Or do hope and belief somehow contribute? Or perhaps does religious involvement increase uh, self-control, self-discipline, which might be important for a wide range of health outcomes? All of these have been proposed as possible mechanisms by which service attendance affects health. The extent of their relative contributions is still an open question, and probably it's some combination of these different explanations. There are perhaps many pathways from religion to health. One rather intriguing aspect of these associations is that it turns out it is frequency of service attendance that most strongly predicts longevity. It is service attendance rather than religious identity or self-assessed spirituality or private spiritual practices which seems to matter most for health. Something about the communal religious experience and participation seems to be important. And it's not just social support. Social support seems to only explain maybe 20 to 30 percent of the effect. The communal experience does offer social support, but it appears to also offer something more powerful than this as well. Is it a common set of values? A sense of accountability? Corporate experience of the transcendent? The divine? Whatever it is, the empirical research suggests that it is something very different and something more powerful for health than simply solitary spirituality. In an era in which many people identify as spiritual but not religious, 
and in which the term organized religion tends to carry negative connotations, this empirical research and its implications perhaps challenges our preconceptions and maybe suggests that personal spirituality, discarding all organized and communal aspects of religion, may not be an entirely satisfactory way forward. So what, what are we to make of all of this? Well, different groups might interpret the results differently. Skeptics might still question whether the causal relationship really has been established. Can we ever really be sure about causation? Believers might see the research as some subtle confirmation of their beliefs, but, but one generally wouldn't recommend or prescribe religion for the purposes of health. People don't generally decide to become religious for health reasons. The decisions made more on the grounds of belief systems of meaning, evidence, upbringing, experiences, relationships, and so on, and so forth. However, for the roughly half of all Americans who do already believe in God, but do not regularly attend services, the research on attendance and health perhaps constitutes an invitation back to communal religious life. Something about the communal religious experience and participation seems to matter. Where else today does one find a community with the possibility of a shared moral and spiritual vision, a sense of mutual accountability, wherein the central task of the members is to love and care for one another? The teachings, the relationships, the spiritual practices, over time, week after week, taken together, gradually alters behavior, creates meaning, alleviates loneliness, and shapes a person in ways perhaps too diverse to document. Such things alter health. Thank you.